Welcome back, everybody. Um, so just to recap where we left off in the last video, Noel was telling us about how he was in the um, switching from the twice daily injections over to MDI. So take it away, Noel, from there. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as I say, I, I pushed the, the, the answer to the question down the road for so many years because I was comfortable just having the two injections. I think it was all I ever knew because my dad was like that for so long. Um, and it was only when I, I, I think it was the first time I ever said why. And it was one of the consultants team. I didn't see the consultant himself, but one of the team basically explained. So, OK, you'll take this insulin at nighttime when you come to bed. This is your background insulin. This is what this does. And then the other insulin is just for food. And I was like, OK, why? Um, she kind of said, well, look, you know. It's, it gives you a little bit more freedom than what you have now. What you're at the moment is you take X amount of insulin. You have to eat food to cover the length and the strength of that insulin. With this, said your background insulin will work in the background. That just keeps everything kind of bubbling away and keeps everything ticking over. The fast acting, acting insulin is just for what you decide to eat. And she said, literally, it will be what you decide to eat. So if it's, if it's a low carb snack, you take very little. You might not have to take any at all. And when she said that, I kind of went, hold on, I don't have to take insulin if I have a small snack. She's like, no. She's like, you know, if there's anything low carb, if it's like nuts or if it's a bit of low joy fruit or whatever, like she said, you can, you know, you don't have to take insulin. You can skip a meal. And skipping a meal for me after 17 years was an anomaly. It was a wonderful thing. Do you know what I mean? So um, we had a really, really good chat about it. It made me understand it better. I never understood it because I never wanted to. And as soon as I wanted to, she started rolling in phrases like carb counting and, and different things like that. And uh, I think from that day, because I showed an interest, they showed more of an interest for me. And that really has helped in the last three years because I've gone from somebody who didn't really give a toss about diabetes or my diabetes to absolutely giving a toss about mine and everybody else's, you know, because I've learned so much in, I, I think I learned so much in six months from then um, that every time I went back, I wanted more. And they were really, really receptive. They were like, Every time I went in, my AMC was going from here to here to here to here to here, um, to to a point that I think old money, the nines, had very very quickly gone into the sevens and gone into the sixes, and started to hit the fives. Um, it made me realise I what I had done so wrong for so long, and then I knew that it was quite easy to fix. Um, so. You know, I, I know people have hearing experiences with, with different clinics they're in that they don't get the, you know, they don't get the support that they need. I did. And I'm really, really grateful for it. Um, but yeah, I took I took to it like a duck to water and I just wanted to know more. So, you know, I, you know, I taught myself how to care account and then I got the opportunity to do Daphne in what, two years ago, I think, or a year yes. and a half ago. Yeah, and I so. shared your, um, cause you, um, so it was a around 2018 that you discovered the diabetes in Ireland Facebook group and community. Yes. Yeah. Um, so all these kind of, these docs kind of, you know, got, got Started into a nice little row. Place. Yeah. 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 And, and when you did Daphne, you wrote a post in that group and I asked to share it on private visas. So I'm going to link That's that right. in our our sure, video yeah. so that people can read it so it. yeah so <laughs> let's talk about Daphne I mean because yeah. before Daphne you had said that you um you were self-taught in carb counting pretty much I just I did what most people would do it was like I googled I went on I kind of went I tried to figure out what it was and I mean like it, you know for me it was when I started the NDI and went in and sat with the girls the nurses in the clinic uh, to learn about you know the, you know the the nova rapid or whatever like it was like I was sent off with a you know for every ten grams of carbs you need one unit um let's keep a diary for four weeks come back to us in four weeks we'll go again um and I know now you know that that was basically so that they could see and and it was I was sorry first I was given the go off take six units per meal and come okay. back to us in four weeks and I realise now that's the they want to see where you fall and where you where you where you jump, um. So they can go, okay, well maybe you're, um, you know, they need to look at your ratios and stuff like that. I knew absolutely nothing about that, um. Thankfully, it turned out that I was a one one or a, a, you know one unit to ten gram person, and I still am, touch wood, and you know it continues that way for, 
for as long as I can get away with it. Um, so it was easy enough for me to go with that one unit per 10 grams rule. Um, and how did, you, how did you figure out how to calculate 10 grams of carbs in the meals? Did they oh, give you a basic instruction before no. you did Daphne? No, you had to figure Pretty that out Pretty much not. Yourself. No, I figured it out myself. And I, I kind of went with food labels. Um, you know, I, I think I was still at that stage quite partial to a ready meal. Um, you know, so just with work and stuff like that, you can come home, you can just go with a supermarket, you can pick up something which is which is half decent, even though it's in a packet, but everything is on the back of the packet on a label. You know, exactly. if you're buying spreads, makes, you know, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? I just had to do a bit of, uh, you know, uh, just be a little bit kind of creative with fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. But then I realized afterwards, doing the daffy, that the, you know, there's an easier way to do it too. Like, do you know what I mean? But I remember going to see a dietitian. Um, after they told me I could do the Daphne course, they sent me to see a dietitian and I went through my day. Um, she kind of looked at me and I don't think you're going to need this, but you're going to really enjoy it. And she was right. It was probably one of the, the, the most enjoyable weeks I've ever had. Um, and again, just made me want to do more. You know what I mean? Because I, I, I went in again with an understanding of carb counting um, and NDI kind of you know regimes and came out with things I, I didn't expect to learn do you know what I mean so there was a there was a few little gems in there that I still have and I still use and I'm actually doing a refresher at the moment online um cool. which they gave me ages ago and I never got around to actually logging into the open university part and doing it so I actually started doing it last week and it's great to go back to it again and um, because you forget so much you know so um yeah but look it's it's changed it's changed how I live my day and it's very very easy and it's just it's so freeing it just makes things so much easier um and it doesn't give me a headache every time I take something out to have for my breakfast dinner and supper or whatever do you know what I mean so yeah so let's move on then um because you have I mean after that first month with the personal coach and keeping that record Mm -hmm. What made you decide to, well, I mean, I suppose it's obvious that you were feeling so good and you saw such a difference after that month, but yeah. you said that, that you kept going. What were the milestones <clears throat> that, because you've reached quite a few. Yeah, so I think the, the, the initial goal after I saw how much what I had done with food had affected the diabetes, um, there was there was other things she'd mentioned about exercise. I was never really that active. Um, would have been when I was a teenager in school, but that all went out the window when I left school. Um, so I started walking. She basically said, look, I'm not expecting you to run, run a marathon, but I started to walk and I realised that that was having an effect too. So I kept doing that. And as I say, between, you know, changing onto the, before changing onto the MDI, that helped guess the insulin levels down as well. I did the bike to work. I started to cycle to work, which I live halfway between the city centre and the airport. So it's it's a decent cycle. So I started to cycle to work. Um, I started to share online a lot of stuff that I was doing around the same time as that. Like I joined the like you know the diabetes and Ireland Facebook group because I'd never been a part of any group related to diabetes because I kept that to myself and I used my social media for my stuff. But I kind of realised that I probably wasn't the only one in the same boat. So I kind of had a look. It was very quiet in the background for a while, but saw other people doing similar things. Took from that. So a friend of mine got in touch. He just qualified as a personal trainer. Coaxed me for weeks to go down and just do one night in the gym that I never, ever wanted to do. Um, and I absolutely loved it. And I was with him for the good to six months. And then I joined, I actually joined the gym, which I never thought I would do. <laughs> and I'm still a member. Um, and during the lockdown and stuff like that, I kind of, I, like before that, I, I started to run. It was something I never wanted to do. Even when I was feeling the way I was feeling, running was never something I wanted to do because I saw people crossing finish lines at races. And I kind of thought, I never, ever want to feel like that because they looked like they were going to collapse, die on the ground. My sister is a really enthusiastic long distance runner. And she was kind of said, look, she saw I was training in the gym. And she said, look, give yourself a year. There's a there's a, a 5K race in the Phoenix Park in August of next year, which is 2019. Um, and she said, look, you have a year, you know, she said, and it's only 5K. You know what I mean? I did it. I did, did cool. another one. I've done more. I've done a four mile. I've done 10Ks on my own. Um, I did. I really, really annoyed because I wanted to do 
the Diabetes Ireland related kind of challenge last year, but I'd already signed up to do a 50K in May for multiple sclerosis. Or sorry, MS, yeah, MS Ireland. Yeah. So I had, I had to do 50 kilometers over the month of May. I ended up doing 82. Wow. Do you know what I mean? So, but like that was like running three and four times a week. And I, I couldn't have ran to catch a bus the year before that. Do you know what I mean? So, um, but that's just, it's just normal now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So what I, I, I'm I trying to do every day is try and think of my diabetes differently. And, you know, if I'm going to push myself, what do I need to do to make sure I'm not going to go through the floor? Or, you know, if I'm trying to correct something, I'm not going to go through the roof. So it has become a little bit of an obsession, but it's kind of a nice obsession because, I, you know, I can help other people too. And it's working for you. I mean, you it's, have yeah. basically turned your life around. It's been amazing, yeah. the transformation. Yeah. They've come, yeah. they're comfortable. It still surprises me, you know, when, when I kind of look back because it was never one of those. I never did it before or after, uh, refused to. I have done some since because, you know, it, it does give you a sense of, you know, you've done something. It was my sister sent me a photograph. She saw a picture of me at that time and then went back five years and found a photograph and put the two of them side by side. And she said it to me, she said, I know you won't do this, but I think you need to see this. Yeah. And it was when I saw that, it was like, yeah, my yeah. life is now completely different, you know? Yeah. And you definitely, to see how far you've come, you have to look back to where you were. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes sense. So With no regrets. Yes, exactly. So we're very yeah. quickly running out of time, but I want to talk okay. about, because you are hoping to um, transition onto an insulin pump. And I asked you, um, when we talked before, what, what prompted that decision and how that came about? So can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I thought your decision was very well thought through. Yeah. And I was probably led by getting um, <clears throat> the, I'd get the CGM, getting the Dexcom G6 back at the end of 2018 because I'd never had anything attached to me before that. So I had gone through a whole 17 years of diabetes with, with just a pen, just the old glucometer, and, and, and that was it. So, um because I had started to be more active, somebody suggested I should get a CGM. I didn't think I'd get one because I didn't think I fit much of the criteria. But when I asked, um, I have to say my consultant is, is fairly, fairly proactive and fairly supportive when somebody is trying to change their life. So I got a CGM. I got used to wearing that. And then I realized that, you know, with the running and the endurance stuff and being in the gym, um, I wanted more control of the insulin that I already had. So when I spoke to my consultant in January, my explanation for wanting a pump was basically I wanted, now that I had control over my fast insulin and my ratios and my, you know, my doses and stuff like that, I still felt I had no control over my basal insulin because I, the only thing I had done was change from, say, one dose a day to split it in half and take it two doses. But it still wasn't enough. I couldn't go and run or couldn't, couldn't just get up and go for a run. I had to plan, you know, a day in advance if I knew I was going to run tomorrow. I'd have to make sure I didn't take it when I got up in the morning. I have to eat carbs. I have to go out. But that didn't always work. You know, I mean, there and there are pitfalls. So when I spoke to Smith back in January and found me out on the phone, I explained to him that I wanted a button I could push to switch it on. I wanted something that would give me the freedom to suspend the background insulin for an hour before I did something. Um, because I always felt you're trying to, you know, if, if if things don't go to plan, I could plan to go out in the morning and go for a run. It could be torrential rain, it could be snow, it could be ice. So I then have to play catch up because all the preparations I've put in now have to be unprepared. Like I have to start eating, yeah. I have to start taking insulin and stuff like that. So I wanted I wanted to have that much control that I think I thought only a pump was was the way. I, just, I love your way of thinking, you know. So he said, I can't not say you can't have a pump. Like, you know, so he, he basically said, yeah, straight away, he said, look, might take a while but we're going to get you one so i'm back in next month or this month actually in two weeks time so fingers crossed i get my first pump excellent after a total of how many years with, with nearly diabetes? 20 years nearly yeah. 20 years 20 yeah. years yeah yeah well, what what a transformation in in the last three to four years that you've made three years yeah yeah literally three and, years and it, it sometimes makes me think if if you know, in the time before, I had somebody said, you know, how are you doing in those early days of diabetes? Yeah. yeah. Might that have been the button that got this all started sooner or, mm. you know? 
Maybe, yeah. I mean, and, and I, I guess I think we've spoken. And I mean, you, you, you knew probably better than I did when I joined the online community because it was just something that I did. And it was probably in conversation with somebody else or maybe sitting in a waiting room in Bowmount when I was waiting for an appointment. I thought, oh, God, there's a Facebook group. And I joined it. And as I say, I wasn't very vocal. I wasn't very active. And then over the, the last couple of years, I was introduced to the, 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 the Type 1 Diabetic Dublin support group, who I wanted to go to the meeting in March last year. Couldn't go. That was going to be my first time meeting these people. Um, we went into lockdown. The world changed. Uh, but I've been on those Zoom calls ever since. And I've gotten to know so many more people. And I now speak to multiple people with diabetes uh, like uh, multiple times a day or at least every day of the week I speak to one person that has diabetes and I never had that because I had my dad lost my dad um my sister has a close friend who was diagnosed a few years ago uh but outside of that you know it was the online community that really got really helped me help myself you know that is so cool and I love hearing that mm-hmm. I love hearing that kind of feedback from peer support and it's and you know, in a way, it kind of annoys me a little bit because it is undervalued and it's Completely. underutilized yeah. and yeah. should be part, you know, should be signposted by, you know, our doctors and nurses. It's something that, that can it complement, yeah, yeah Absolutely. and complement care. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I think it's why I'm so vocal, you know, on a daily basis on, on, the, on the Facebook group, be it the support group or the diabetes and early Facebook group, because there's people out there every day with problems and they're just looking for an answer. You don't have to tell them what to do. You can tell them what you do. It's, um, but it's just seeing those so many people every day and they may be all the same thing, but just to be able to go in and answer gives gives somebody else a little bit of comfort that they're not, they're not on their own. And you don't get that in a waiting room in a hospital. You don't get that sometimes from somebody who's studying endocrinology and they're the one that's seeing you and you're not seeing your consultant. So I think peer support is hugely underrated and really, really needs to be you know, streets, streets ahead of more, more, more out there than it is at the moment. And it is out there. It's great. It's absolutely great. Excellent. And that's a great positive note to actually end this interview on. No, thanks a million for giving me so much of your time and for sitting down and just sharing so much of your story with me and with our tribal Reese's viewers. And, um, I look forward to lots and lots more chats. Thank you. Absolutely. And thanks for having me, Grania. And, Thank you so much for giving me the chance to do this. You're welcome.